Cyclone Darian looking impressive in the Indian Ocean on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 20th. Cyclone Darian is a Category 1 on the Saffir Simpson scale with winds of around 85 miles per hour and could strengthen further over the next few days as it ventures across the South Indian Ocean. Shouldn't be a threat to land but still an interesting system to be looking at. No other storms active at this time but a few areas of interest, thankfully not in the Atlantic Ocean. So we are looking probably towards the next season now with 163 days remaining until June 1st. And we'd like to keep that number very high for a while, please. No storms, thank you. In the Australian region, though, we do have a 10% area of interest, and there's a lot of uncertainty around this one. There's a very large shape around it there, uh, but at the moment it looks like it could strike that region, could get to minimal tropical storm status and wrap up quickly as it uh, moves over land and then move inland. Darwin there generally moving southwards right now and strengthening around 85 miles per hour and the pressure in the 970s around 974, 975 and another area of interest to the west there that we've been monitoring for quite a while still at 20%. Uh, short window for that now by the way it, time is running out and no areas of interest in the North Indian Ocean at this point the two systems that we were looking at the remnants of Mandus and that area of interest have been scrubbed. So then let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery across the NHC basins. The Atlantic Ocean looks like this right now. Um, large streets of uh, dry air there, mainly in the Caribbean out over the Atlantic. And this is a typical winter pattern. A few showers bursting up over the southern United States. I think there's a general thunderstorm risk there today. Um, and looking towards the eastern Pacific there, things looking fairly quiet. Uh, dry air, very... Um, clear to see along the coastal areas although a lot of precipitation moving up through California and the US West Coast uh, throughout today all right then the important point today the satellite imagery of Darien uh, this is imagery from the Indian satellites and you can see how it's been progressing uh, throughout the last I think this is nearly a 24-hour loop actually and you can see how this storm has been progressing it's got a decent eyewall structure uh, I'm not sure if it's fully uh, closed off yet but it's looking fairly good um, and its outflow is looking fairly decent as well especially on that southern side a big band uh, doming out towards the southern side this is the round image which I'm sure we're all more familiar with. You can see extremely high cloud tops actually on the west and northwestern sides. And in the later frames there, you can see that it could perhaps be consolidating and may be on its way to category two status if this appearance continues for a bit longer. Um, and if I'm being honest, it might get even further than that if it does well in the next 12 to 24 hours. So keep watching it closely. It could become a major, but it will remain out at sea. The Western Pacific looks like this right now and you can see a lot of uh, disorganized, disjointed convection blowing up around the Philippine Islands so they'll be getting a lot of rainfall but it will feel rather monsoonal like and it won't really be uh, organized like a tropical cyclone and it will be very scatty here and there. Some areas will get a lot more precipitation than others. Wide shot of the Indian Ocean, you can see everything that's going on here right now uh, on that line on the western side of Darien, a big line across the uh, tropical region there. Something might come out of that but chances are dwindling and the southern part of India and Sri Lanka looks like it's getting uh, part of that disturbance that we were watching last week. And this is the Australian region. You can see a lot of unsettled weather going on there as well in the coastal regions. And we are watching very closely around the eastern Indonesian islands for potentially something to start going and maybe seeing that tropical cyclone. Let's take a look at sea surface temperatures and they're still dropping off now as we really enter the winter period now in the northern hemisphere. Not much to see in the southern hemisphere, of course, in the western hemisphere. Um, but you can see there 28 degrees still for parts of the eastern Pacific and the western Caribbean Sea. But that won't really help any tropical cyclone development due to the very hostile conditions in the form of dry air and wind shear. Um, let's take a look at the rest of the uh, world then. 
when the imagery is ready for us. Here's the Indian Ocean. You can see the southern half of the Indian Ocean there. Looks like it's really starting to warm up a little bit more now, uh, getting closer to the 30 degree isotherms. Uh, the area where Darien is actually aren't that warm compa in comparison. Uh, around 28 degrees at a push, but maybe a little bit less than that. Um, and it will start sinking into colder waters unless it turns towards the west, which is what we're expecting on models. And it may then uh, manage to maintain its strength or keep some of its strength for later on in its life. We'll check those models in a moment. Here's the sea surface temperature anomalies, and you can see the Western Pacific uh, still quite a bit above average, and the South Pacific. The La Nina effect, people suggesting that it might be coming to a close soon. Well, maybe we are seeing some little signs on this imagery. It's not quite looking as strong as it did in earlier updates. It's quite hard to tell day to day, but I think month to month, you might notice the difference. Oceanic heat content is very good in the um, deep tropics of the South Pacific around the Solomon Islands towards Fiji and in the Western Pacific in the Northern Hemisphere still a few areas there although a big gap in the southern part of the Philippine Sea there close to the Philippines so uh, any late systems the Western Pacific might throw at us will have some trouble. Let's check the GFS uh, model then for the next five days. You can quite clearly see Darien there and it starts to make a quick turn towards the west and then maybe a slight northward element even in that motion there. So it does keep its intensity and then may strengthen again a little bit later down the line um, and then, you know, might have a second peak. And look down towards the bottom left hand side of the image there as well. A potential system might try to become a tropical cyclone in the subtropics there. Let's keep an eye on as well near the end of that five day period. Longer range, looking at the same area, there's Darien continuing uh, past Christmas day into the uh, very late part of the month and it's still going strong. Uh, dipping southwestwards doesn't look like it's going to be a threat to the Masserine Islands and eventually starts to turn post-tropical around the 30th there, that's day 10. Watch that again and you can see it does, uh, it's quite an ace generator I suppose you could say, uh, being near hurricane equivalent strength for most of its life as it continues along that path in the next 10 days and then a big recurve caused by that front to the south. Well, that's all the serious stuff done with. It's just that basin. At this point, you can take a look at the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode and take a look at all of our items there, including our pillows and hoodies and our still waiting for Hone t-shirts. You can also request animations, individual and full season on there. And here is the extra long range, day 10 to 16. Darien's remnants continue and actually swivel back northwards a little bit there, but they won't regenerate, don't worry. Then right at the very end of this period here, towards day 16, another system starts swirling up there off the west coast of Australia, and it looks like it will start to move towards this west-southwest. That could be our first storm of 2023, so keep a look out there, but that is extremely long range. Also in the far distant range, we're looking at the South Pacific, a potential non-tropical system that might become tropical there, south of Fiji, and then move westwards. Uh, interesting how that one goes, and maybe one or two tropical systems there in the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. Uh, quick spin-up type systems there, and that may be something that um, we might be watching out for, but at the moment that is extremely speculative, all of this, and I wouldn't lose any sleep over that. The biggest concern I'd say for Australia is this potential system in five days that's currently at 10% and it probably would be a higher percentage if it wasn't so uncertain about its location. Well, back on this day was a bit of a shocker. On December 20th, 1984, a very unusual Category 1 Hurricane Lily out in the open Atlantic. Some of you may remember that one. And it's very eccentric track, making a big wide loop, almost like a lasso type loop around the Atlantic. And then it drifted down towards the south and southwest, almost making it to the Greater Antilles. But it got killed off before it managed to get there. I think it dissipated on Christmas Eve. And Lily was... I think the uh, the uh, largest ace producer in the Atlantic in December. I think that record still stands. Well then, back to today, and if we do get any late season surprise in the Atlantic, it's looking very unlikely now, it would be named Owen. In the Eastern Pacific, even more unlikely, Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, even more unlikely, Hone. 
in the Western Pacific. We may still get that late system, but it's not looking uh, promising for that now. But the next name is Sanvu, and that carries over into the next season as well. The North Indian Ocean's next name is Mocha, and now in the Southern Hemisphere, I've been saying Darien for so long, the next name in the Australian region now is Eli. In the Southwest Indian, it's still Chaniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again as normal tomorrow night. <laughs>